In this video, I am going to explain about the Cisco SDA Fabric Wireless Controller or WLC. But before talking about it, let me to explain about the traditional deployment of wireless LAN controller. As you can see here, we have a simple network. In this simple network, we have access, distribution, and core switch. As you can see, this is the access switch. This is the access, uh, distribution layer switch. And also here you can see that we have core layer switch. And also we have a data center, for example. In this data center, we have wireless LAN controller or WLC. Also, as you can see here, we have two access points, each of them connected to one of the access switches and the wireless client connect to the wireless actually to the access point and you know that in traditional wireless deployment we have two tunnels between the a each ap and the wireless controllers okay actually between the ap and wireless lan controller we have a control tunnel and also we have a data tunnel both of them establish with the control and provisioning of wireless access point type of tunnels okay but one of them is for control plane traffic and one other for data plane traffic means user data all traffic actually all data traffic uh, wirelessly received from the endpoint will tunnel to the wireless LAN controller and after that from the wireless LAN controller those traffic will forward to the destination actually as a review, we know that in traditional wireless deployment, the wireless LAN controller is typically centralized. And all control plane and data plane means wireless client data traffic need to be tunneled to the wireless LAN controller through the control and provisioning of wireless access point or cap web tunnel. But about these features, we have some differences in Cisco ST access fabric. For example, in Cisco ST access fabric, as I explained in the next part of this video, we have only control plane traffic or we have control plane tunnel actually between the AP and wireless LAN controller. And we don't tunnel the data traffic received from the endpoints in the AP to the wireless LAN controller. Let me to explain about the Cisco ST access fabric wireless controller or WLC. About the fabric wireless controller or WLC, as you can see in this figure, this is an external device in compare with the SDA fabric. Actually, a fabric enabled wireless LAN controller connects APs and wireless endpoints okay, to the SD access fabric. The wireless LAN controller is external to the fabric as you can see here and connects to the SD access fabric through an internal border node. And you know about internal border node, this is the border node that connect other components of our company to the SDA fabric. Okay, because of that, here, for example, we have two internal border nodes and they connect some services, some actually features like DNA center, like ICE and like wireless LAN controller or uh, actually WLC. Because of that, the uh, fabric enabled WLC is the external service for the ST access, okay, or SDA fabric and it uh, connect to the SDA fabric with the help of internal border nodes and also a fabric wireless LAN controller or WLC node provides onboarding and mobility service for wireless users and endpoints connected to the SD access fabric it means that when you move for example from this place this AP to other AP this is the function of wireless LAN controller that register your new location into the control plane node. What does it mean? It is like the edge node for wireless clients. You know that each edge node, okay, for example, the fabric edge, this fab, the left fabric edge, when detect wired devices, wired endpoint, it should register it into the control plane node. 
And here we have similar functionalities. When you move from one AP to the other AP, this is the function of wireless LAN controller or WLC that register your new location, your new outlook into the control plane node. It means that WLC is like the fabric edge for wireless clients. Okay. Because of that, a fabric wireless LAN controller or WLC also perform beside of this PXTR registration to the fabric control plane on behalf of the fabric edge and can be thought of as a fabric edge for wireless clients. Now you can easily understand it. The control plane node maps the host EID to the current fabric access point and fabric edge node location the access point is attached to. It means that in control plane, we have this information that the EID of wireless client connected to which R look, it means which actually switch or fabric edge. In control plane, we have this information. Also, as you can see here, in compare with the traditional, actually WLC, in traditional WLC deployment, we have control plane and data plane tunnel between the AP and wireless LAN controller. But here we have only control plane tunnel with wireless LAN controller. And again, we use CAPWAP, okay, the control and provisioning of wireless access points. But instead of forwarding all traffics of wireless clients to the actually wireless LAN controller or WLC, we don't forward them and we forward them from the with VXLAN virtual extensible local area network protocol directly to the destination. Here we have some notes, you will learn about them. But as you can see, it is better. Why we need to forward the traffic to wireless LAN controller outside of the fabric and again inside of the fabric? It is not efficient. Okay. In SD access, the wireless control plane remains centralized, but the data plane is distributed using VXLAN directly from the fabric enabled APs. These two AP are fabric enabled APs. Okay. As you can see here, uh, we have the SD access deployment of wireless or that wireless LAN controller. Also, about the, let me to give you a little more detail. Look at here. We have fabric AP. Fabric APs establish a VXLAN tunnel to the fabric edge, okay, to this fabric edge, to transport wireless client data traffic through the VXLAN tunnel instead of the CAPWAP tunnel. For this to work, the AP must be directly connected to the fabric edge or a fabric extended node. Don't worry about the fabric extended node. Using a VXLAN tunnel to transport the wireless tra data traffic increases performance and scalability because the wireless client data traffic doesn't need to be tunneled to the wireless LAN controller via CAPWAP, as in traditional wireless deployment, because the routing decision is taken directly by the fabric edge. Okay. Also, here we have some other benefits. I will explain them now. But for now, let me to inform you that when one wireless client register itself or onboard, the information will be sent from this AP to the wireless LAN controller and wireless LAN controller or WLC will register this information like EID, like the AP and switch connected to it, to the, the actually control plane node. And because of that, and also when you move to other device, again, we have this information from the wireless LAN controller register into the control plane node. And when we want to send traffic from this wireless endpoint to other wireless endpoint, the traffic will be tunneled from the AP to the edge node and from edge node to the destination edge node according to the uh, information received from the control plane node uh, with the pool model you know about it how i can reach to for a specific eid control plane node sa says with this r look and then you can establish vxlan tunnel and because of that the path of data traffic between these two endpoints is from ap edge node edge node ap Okay, it is easy. Also, here we have some other details that you will learn more than it's about them. For example, you know that when one client authenticate wired or wireless 
with the help of Cisco Ice, Cisco Ice will assign it SGT tag or SGT, a scalable group tag, okay, and also some VRF based policies. Because of that, the, uh, the next function of it is in addition, uh, SGT and VRF based policies for wireless users on Fabric and SSID, for example, are applied to the Fabric Edge in the same way as for the wired user. As a summary, Fabric enabled wireless LAN controller takes part in the control plane operations, such as registering the wireless clients to the control plane node, but does not participate in the data plane. Its role is to connect Fabric access points or APs and wireless endpoints to the Cisco SD access fabric. The wireless client connect to the Fabric APs and the fabric enabled wireless LAN controller registers them to the control plane node and wireless client R look, including the AP that the client is connected to and the local edge node for the AP is connected to. And finally, the fabric AP forms a cap web tunnel to the wireless LAN controller and a VX LAN tunnel to the edge node, as you can see here. Uh, once the wireless client is associated over control and provisioning of wireless access points or cap web, uh, client traffic uses the fabric through the AP to H, okay, VXLAN tunnel. Consistently, policy can be applied for wired and wireless clients with Cisco SD access because the data pass is through the fabric for wired and also wireless uh, traffic. In future, we will learn more than this about the Fabric Wireless uh, Controller or WLC, but for now, we can understand the differences between the implementation of Wireless LAN Controller in traditional LAN and in also Cisco SDA Fabric. But when you implement it in the Cisco DNA Center, you will better understand the detail of uh, its functionality.